Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. It seems that a lot of things were broken this week, including GPU clock speed records, our hope for the future of Blizzard Entertainment, and the hearts of QNAP network-attached storage device users everywhere thanks to a pretty bad ransomware attack. It's enough to make you want to change the subject and talk about the weather or something, so we'll do that too with my first ever GPU weather forecast. There be squalls ahead! It's time for Tech News. Excellent! Corsair has expanded their new case lineup with the 5000 series, a premium chassis with three versions available, the sleek 5000D, the 5000D Airflow, and the 5000X with tempered glass panels and three 120mm air guide RGB fans. A spacious interior provides room for multiple radiators or up to 10 120mm fans, and there are tons of convenient features for building like hinged removable panels, flexible storage options for hard drives or SSDs, and rapid route cable management guides. Available in black or white, so click the sponsor link in the description for more. With discrete GPUs in short supply, gamers have been looking for alternative solutions. So AMD's recently announced 5000G series of CPUs that have integrated Vega graphics are getting a bit more notice than they would have otherwise. While we still don't know when the processors like the 4-core 5300G, 6-core 5600G, and 8-core 5700G will come to market for consumers, the 8-core version was spotted in a CPU-Z validation log this week by Tum Apisak on Twitter. This was probably uploaded by a system integrator running some tests on a new configuration since OEM SIs are the only sources who should have access to the chips right now. The logs show a clock speed just shy of 3.8 gigahertz at 1.08 volts, and the chip was running at 40.6 degrees Celsius. It's hard to derive too much beyond that since the cooling setup is unknown, but the listed motherboard is the Gigabyte X570S Aorus Pro AX, giving further validation to the rumored X570 chipset refresh that might allow for passive cooling. Blizzard announced Tuesday that Overwatch game director Jeff Kaplan is leaving the company and will be replaced by assistant director Aaron Kepler. Kaplan was a beloved figure in the Overwatch community and at Blizzard in general thanks to his nearly 20-year run with the studio, his work on World of Warcraft as well as Overwatch, his passion for communicating directly with fans, and his focus on creating fun and joy-filled experiences for them. While public messaging about his departure is rife with the expected phrases like Jeff leaving big shoes that can't truly be filled, fans quickly began asking questions about what this means for Overwatch 2 development and if there was some underlying reason for Jeff's departure. It's hard not to see the gradual erosion of Blizzard's core staff since the merger with Activision in 2008 though, and along with that have come many decisions that transparently prioritize profits and growth over the close-knit, fan and fun-driven development that characterized 2000's era Blizzard. But hey, I guess they have to pay for Activision CEO Bobby Kotick's $200 million bonus somehow. Here's another lucrative idea for them. We've got WoW class how about they make Blizzard Classic next, a VR experience where you visit a virtual BlizzCon 2007, and Jeff Kaplan and Mike Morhaime and Chris Metzen and all the other OG staff are still there, and you're reminded that there's a brief time when a company led by passionate individuals can make cool stuff that fans love before it's bought by a bigger company and strip mined for resources in order to min-max the profit game for their almighty shareholders. And now, over to Paul with the weather. Thanks Paul, and welcome everyone to the GPU forecast. It's late April, and I hope you guys are prepped for some rough weather this week, as a low pressure area is causing chip shortages to worsen in key areas around the globe. Gamers are already hunkered down, but auto enthusiasts are next in line to feel the icy hand of semiconductor scarcity creeping up the small of their back. Britain's Jaguar Land Rover announced Thursday that it has been forced to stop production for a limited period, and Mercedes maker Daimler said they are cutting the hours of up to 18,500 workers and pausing production at two plants in Germany. No word on how long the freeze will last but hopefully things will thaw out come summertime. Elsewhere, drought-like conditions have left many gamers parched and looking for any relief they can find. And indeed, photos showing new GPUs en route from China indicate that the graphics card flow has not dried up entirely. These are new GPUs even, the previously rumored RTX 3080 Ti from Nvidia, which MSI did a great job of keeping secret by printing the name on the outside of the shipping pallet and then wrapping it with transparent cling wrap. The 3080 Ti will apparently have a 12 gig frame buffer and follow up rumors this week indicate a May 26th launch, and there's even a GPU die shot that shows the GA102-225-A1 chip that will power the new card. That was posted by videocards.com. The 3080 Ti is expected to go for $1,000, US dollars, a bargain in today's market, but forecasts indicate that there will be a light drizzle of the new GPUs rather than the much-needed deluge gamers are hoping for. This late May storm will be followed by another in early June, though, as 
as that's when the RTX 3070 Ti is rumored to launch for $600 with an 8GB GDDR6X memory configuration and 6144 CUDA cores. Now you can't hack the weather yet, but you can try to up your odds of buying a GPU at retail by employing the services of a bot or so I've heard. PC Mag launched a trial balloon to see where the winds might take them in this area by conscripting the bot service Stellar for two weeks for 120 US dollars. Stellar checks a slew of sites every three seconds like a GPU Doppler radar, then promises to log in and make the purchase for you with bot-like speed when stock is detected. There's an impressive level of sophistication in the Stellar UI, and you can even pay extra to use their proxy service. But ultimately, the aspiring scalpers at PC Mag came up empty in part because the few purchases that were made were flagged due to the suspicious bot-like speed with which the sales were completed, and in part because the bot service is competing with other bots. Michael Can, who wrote the article, actually did get a 6800XT from AMD's website during his research, but it was just by being timely and placing the order manually like a normal human being. There's a nice list of non-bot-based suggestions in the article too, if you're on the hunt for a graphics card, so check it out via the link in the description. Now something that really would help clear the air and provide some relief from the tumultuous GPU situation right now would be a shift in how cryptocurrency mining works. But be careful what you wish for. A new cryptocurrency called Chia is generating serious headwinds because it was created by Bram Cohen, who developed the peer-to-peer -peer BitTorrent protocol, which you might have encountered on the high seas. But while Bitcoin crypto mining is based on proof of work and solving computational puzzles, Chia's goal is to save energy by using a proof of space model, which means the more storage you have on your mining rig, the better. And crypto buffs are already banking on Chia's potential success by buying up large capacity hard drives in the four to 16 terabyte range, potentially creating yet another shortage in the PC space, but for storage drives this time. For now, you can't mine Chia directly, but it's expected to open up later this year. Now, I'm all for the advantages of a decentralized monetary system, but why does all the popular crypto seem to create scarcity by basing your profits on how much computer hardware you can hoard? Like proof of disk space? How about crypto that mines off of proof of other ridiculous things? I want crypto that functions on proof of how many compliments you've given out each day. Or how about just proof of how pissed off you are that there are no GPUs to buy? Look, I'm mining right now. Anyway, that's the GPU weather report. Buy an umbrella. Back to you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. I don't know whether to laugh or cry after all that. <laughs> but now it's time for tech briefs. Easy to digest because your attention span gets shorter every day. Speaking of short attention spans, Apple held their spring loaded event this week on 420, proving that they're willing to make a cannabis related pun or two if it will give their hip young audience the impression that Apple is down with that sort of thing. Not like some stuck up straight edge company that doesn't dabble in casual recreational drug use. They made some hardware announcements too. Our friend from Germany, Pro Overclocker Der Bauer, used a PowerColor RX 6900 XT Liquid Devil Ultimate to break the GPU frequency world record in a video posted Wednesday. After hitting 2,820 megahertz with the card's pre-installed water block, Roman set up an LN2 pot and took it to 3,225 megahertz based on GPU-Z readings. PowerColor's 6900 XT Liquid Devil Ultimate uses Radeon's Navi 21 XTXH GPU variant, which has only been spotted in a couple cards and seems to have a lot of OC potential. AMD's Fidelity FX moved a step closer to widespread adoption this week as the graphics suite has been enabled for Xbox Series X and S consoles, and it's already supported in 40 games, including Horizon Zero Dawn, World of Warcraft, Shadowlands, and Cyberpunk 2077. Fidelity FX Super Resolution is the kicker that may boost frame rates in games in a similar way to Nvidia's DLSS 2.0, but AMD wants to enable it across all their hardware that supports it, which means the RDNA 2 hardware in consoles as well as discrete desktop graphics cards. YouTube transcodes a lot of video, so they made a VCU, or Video Transcoding Unit, their own chips designed in-house that live on full-length PCIe riser cards, complete with supplemental power, just like a GPU. The chip is called Argos, and while details have just been revealed this week, there are already thousands of the chips running in Google data centers, providing 20 to 33 times improvement in compute efficiency for video transcoding tasks. Google says 4K video can be available to watch in hours instead of the days it previously took, and anecdotally, I think they're right. I used to have to wait way longer for uploaded videos to process, but nowadays, it's way faster. Thanks, Argos. 
finally, a warning to users of QNAP network attached storage devices out there. On Thursday, it was revealed that there's a massive ransomware campaign underway that is locking user data in password protected 7-zip archives. The ransomware is called QLocker and it began targeting vulnerable devices on Monday. Once archiving is complete, victims are left with a readme.txt ransom note with a unique key that they use to log into the ransomware's Tor payment site, where a payment of 0.01 bitcoins or about 558 US dollars will get you the code to unzip your stuff. If you think your device is vulnerable, QNAP recommends installing the latest malware remover and running a scan, then updating QTS, Multimedia Console, and the media streaming add-on to the latest versions. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and thanks for watching the whole thing. Your feedback is always welcome, so please feel free to leave me a comment section down below. If you're feeling frisky, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description for further reading, and you can also click the like button. If you enjoyed this video, check out my store at paulshardware.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options and new beer sets with coasters, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future, including more tech news next week. Thanks again for watching everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.